So we are talking with Tile Hertzens, headphone maven extraordinaire. And Mahler Music has posed the question, the next question, which is, what is the next big breakthrough in headphone technology for better sound quality that will change how headphones are made? Now, headphones have been around for a long time, and the technology hasn't changed that much. I mean, it's basically a speaker sitting next to your ear. Is there anything <laughs> new that you know coming down the pike that, uh, that might change all of that? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can't tell us or you'd have to kill us, right? No, no, I, I, I could go into this at, at length. Uh, but, <laughs> okay. uh, but, but I, but, but I want to uh, uh, run something by you here for just a second, because you said headphones have been around a long time and, and they're just two speakers next to your ears. Well, I'm going to take exception to that because okay. it, if you, if you, there's a, a thing called the, the loudspeaker and headphone handbook. And in there, there's one chapter out of a very thick book that is kind of the only resource anywhere I've ever found that, that gives you what amount to the, the teal small parameters for a speaker. Just so to remind us, remind us again what the teal small parameters are. Oh, it's things like the enclosure size and air, enclosed air chamber and the diameter of the drivers and the primary resonance of the drivers and the crossover elements and blah, blah, blah. All and that kind up, of stuff. Okay. Yeah, you end up with a chunk of formula that's maybe this big on a page or something. The same formula for headphones is about four times bigger. Huh. Because there is, there's just a lot going on in there that, you know, speakers in the end just put sound out into space and headphones don't. Mm, so good point. You're, good point. You're literally you're literally listening inside a resonant chamber. So it's and you have to create leaks in that chamber and leaks behind the driver and leaks between the driver and that chamber and the how the pads bounce against the side of your head and and all this stuff. So <clears throat> the truth is, from from my perspective. Sennheiser kind of got their act together in the 90s with the, the, uh, the um, HD 560, I think, was kind of the first really good sounding headphone, and it started going from there. But, but really, there was never a lot of money in headphones until Beats came along and smartphones mm. came along. And so mm. really, headphones are, in terms of their developmental life cycle, just getting off the ground. So hmm. we're still in like elementary school in, in a lot of ways in headphones, <clears throat> but that is changing really rapidly, mainly because there's a lot of money in headphones right now. I mean, it's a big market out there. And uh, so, <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot changing in headphones and headphones are now, when I'm talking about traditional wired headphones, are now getting quite a bit better kind of across the board but there's another thing coming along hot and heavy, which is uh, immersive audio and the ability to create three-dimensional soundscapes that seem like they're coming from outside of your head on headphones. for And, for and from all directions, including overhead. But for everywhere, yeah, because uh, gamers want to use it. That's one of the big driving forces. But... But there's also a lot of uh, um, desire for this kind of immersion of audio for smart headphones. Um, soon, we're, we'll, we will start seeing headphones. Well, we already can, can see headphones that have biometric sensors in there, uh, heartbeat, temperature, sweat, uh, um, mm. vibration sensors that, you know, that, that could tell when your, your footfall hits the ground so it can feel that. Count your um, steps, in other words, kind of like a Fitbit in your headphones. Right, exactly. Exactly that. <clears throat> but then taking that even a step further, um, there's this desire as a, uh, to wear a headphone as a display for your smartphone, and you say to your smartphone, where's the railroad station? And all of a sudden you hear from behind you over to one side, the railroad station is over here and you go to look in that direction and then the sound lines up with what you're coming. So the wow. sound is coming from very specific places. And, and the best example of where this would be in, incredibly valuable is for blind people because of course they have 
very little opportunity to gain situational awareness of their surroundings. I mean, they literally have to go up to a store, open the door and say, hey, what kind of store this is? Mm. And <clears throat> with these kinds of headphones, there could literally be a background narration that's going along as they're walking around, you know, Rexall drugstore, you know, Joe's automotive place, da, 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 da. First street, 20 yards away, first street, 10 right, yards right, away, right. you know? <clears throat> so, um, and then of course for uh, home theater, for uh, decoding surround and uh, convincingly giving you a sense of immersion. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I kind of go off on that tangent is, is that in order to, trick your head into thinking that this sound is coming from outside your head, you have to do some very precise tuning of the head-related transfer function cues and how they change as your head's moving around. So they're going to have some pretty powerful DSP engines in there doing that. And one of the things those DSP engines are going to be able to do is uh, compensate for any driver inadequacy. Um, you can imagine in the future when you have DSP in the headphones that they might design headphones w uh, primarily on whether they can get the driver to act without any modal breakup and have the driver act perfectly linearly without regard to the frequency response. And then so they have a driver that they can tell it to do anything they want it to do. And then its natural state without processing isn't very flat. But then as soon as they turn the processing on, they can make it dead flat. <clears throat> well, as a result, if they can create this immersive audio thing really well, there could be just a switch setting where you go, you know, audio file and you push a button and it comes out with a neutral flat response, very good resolution. And it may be that these very smart DSP driven headphones end up and, and these will be consumer products in the three to $500 neighborhood probably, that these headphones may actually become better sounding than passive headphones of any price because you know, all the control has to be done acoustically, which is very, very difficult. So I think we're about to see a lot of change in the world of headphones.